Hello, this is Jake with Optimus Futures, and in this video, I'll be showing you some of the basic features of a chart in the Sierra Chart Platform. Now, more specifically, I'll be showing you how to open up a chart, how to place a trade through a chart, how to open up the trading window, and a few other basic but very crucial and important features necessary when attempting to trade with a chart in the Sierra Chart Platform. So first up, and probably the most simple but crucial step to this video, would be how to open up a chart in this platform. To do so, I would suggest going through the Find Symbol button. You can find the Find Symbol button, labeled FS, located in the upper left-hand corner of the platform window. More specifically, directly to the right of your connection bar. And the button, as I said, is labeled FS. So if you click on that, you'll notice you get a list of all the different symbols and contracts that you can trade on this platform. For my example, I'll be showing the E-mini S&P 500 future of June 2018. So I'll select my contract, double click, and once it's highlighted, you'll notice you get a bunch of different options below this list. You have the option to open up a historical chart. We can open up an intraday chart, open a trading dome, we can duplicate an active chart if there is an active chart on the screen. And if you do have an active chart on the screen, and for whatever reason you want to change the chart symbol, just click on the change chart symbol button and you can change to a new contract. And the final option we have is the get options, which will open up the different options for each of these contracts. For my example, I'll just be opening up an intraday chart. And as you can see, once I click on that, immediately an intraday chart opens up in the background. So we can close this find symbol window out and we can continue. Now that we have our first chart open, there's a couple things to take note of. First off, I'd like to mention that in the bottom left hand corner, you can now see a highlighted blue box has been placed there. This represents the open chart that is currently on my screen. And there's a couple bits of information here being displayed as well. As you can see, the f.us.epm18 represents a contract or the symbol that I'm currently have opened up on the chart. That being the E-mini S&P 500 futures of June 2018. And it is being displayed at a one minute interval. And now the number to the right of that, the number one, designates that this was the first chart and the first symbol for that chart that I opened up. So what I mean by that is for every new chart that you will open up after this one, it'll be given a number in a corresponding order. So let's say, for example, for the next chart I open up, I wanted to open up the E-mini S&P 500 future of September 2018. That chart will be labeled with the number two. And let's say after that, I open up another one for the E-mini of December. That chart will be labeled number three. So it's just worth noting that the charts opened up in corresponding orders will have the corresponding numbers associated to them. And it's worth noting that you should keep track of which chart you ha currently have open. That way you don't get confused. Now, as for some other basic but very notable features of charts in this platform, it's worth mentioning that charts do have minimize, maximize, and close out buttons. If we take a look at the upper right hand corner of our chart now, as you can see, we'll have the three corresponding buttons for minimize, maximize, and close out. So if I click the little dash, we will minimize our chart. And as you can see here, usually by default, it is placed in the bottom left-hand corner up above the, that chart, active chart button. As you can see, we can drag it around our platform. We can maximize it. We can minimize it again. And we can also close it out. And you'll get a confirmation when you do choose to close this out. Now let me show you what it looks like when you have multiple charts on the screen at one time. So I'll open up the June E-mini 2018. And then I'll open up the September one as well. And as I mentioned before, if you do have two open charts active, the active one will be designated by a blue highlight box in the bottom left hand corner. So as you can currently see, I have the September of the E-mini currently open, and it is designated as number two because that is the second chart I opened. 
and you can click on these tabs in the bottom left to switch back and forth in between the two. You can also click the maximize button to make them smaller and you can rearrange these windows and scale to fit as you'd like. That way you can fit mul multiple contracts and multiple charts on the screen at one time. It's really up to you. This is all personal preference, but you do have the option to do so. Now, just for organizational purposes, I'm going to close out my number two chart. And as I said before, you can click on the red X and you'll get a confirmation to remove this chart window. And if I click on yes, now we're back to just one chart. And although I did make a video about this, I'm going to cover it very briefly as I feel as it is very important for charts. And that's the ability to add additional symbols onto a chart. So although I just showed you the ability to open up multiple charts for multiple different contracts, I can actually place multiple contracts and symbols on one active chart. To do that, go to Analysis, Studies, highlight the Add Additional Symbol button, and click Add. And under Settings and Inputs, we'll head over to Input Name Symbol, and under Input Value, we'll click on Find Symbol, located right here in the bottom. Click on Find Symbol, and find the contract that you'd like to place on your chart. We can scroll down. As for this symbol, it doesn't matter what it is. This is very useful when possibly spread trading or doing other types of trading where you need to look at multiple symbols at once. So as I did before, I had the E-mini of June up. In this time, I'll add this September. That way you can compare the price action between the month. If I click OK, then click Apply, and click OK, click Apply, then click OK once more. As you can now see, we currently have two open contracts on one active chart. So once again, for organizational purposes, I'm going to just leave one contract on the screen at one time. So I could either close out this chart, which will completely reset it, or I can go back into analysis, go into studying, highlight my new study, and then click remove. Click apply, click OK, and now we're back to default. So as you can see, you can easily change that on the fly. And if you needed to, you can also go back and edit the setting to easily change the input symbol that you have for your second symbol on the chart. So now that we've gotten some of the basic functions and visual features out of the way, I'd like to show you how to actually place a trade from a chart on this platform. And there are multiple methods of doing so, and I'll take you through each one of them. And I won't be going too deep into these methods. I won't be showing you all the specific order types and things like that but I just wanted to give you a basic foundation of how to place a trade from a chart. So the first option would to be turning on chart trade mode. To do so, head to the top of your platform window and click on the trade tab. Scroll down just a bit and click on the tab that says chart trade mode on. You can also use the shortcut control shift C. And once you click that, you'll immediately notice a change to your chart if you take a look in the top left hand corner where it says sim trade and it is designated with a blue highlight that currently means that my chart trade mode is currently on once you do activate chart trade mode functionality within a chart changes so for example our first functionality that changes is within that blue highlighted box that i mentioned previously designating that the chart trade mode is on if we click within that blue box you can now change the quantity of contracts that you'd like to trade, trade with. Plus adding more contracts, subtracting, obviously subtracting them. Or you can manually input it, this by deleting and entering in the amount of contracts you'd like to trade. And if we click OK, now we will currently trade 10 lots of the E-mini S&P. And you can see the amount of contract size by the number to the left of the at symbol. As for actually placing a trade within a chart, you can now do so by right clicking anywhere within the chart. Depending on where your pointer currently is at, that is what the current price action of your trade will be placed at. An easier way of seeing where your pointer is actually at is by right clicking within the chart and going down to cross chart values and crosshair. And if we activate that and left click, you'll get a crosshair to see what your current price action is currently at. So unless you are placing a trade on the market price, I would suggest having on these crosshairs. 
as you want the most accurate representation of your current price action being displayed. In. But if you are placing a market price, it will obviously buy or sell at the current market price. And then, like as I said before, depending on where our crosshairs are at, we can place a limit order. So let's say I want to do a sell stop limit. And as you can see, if I right click, it'll currently trade at 2721.75 and I can get confirm this by pressing yes. I won't be opting to do this, but I just wanted to show you that it is possible. And if I scroll down here, maybe I wanted to place a buy stop. If I click that, you will see the current price action is currently at 2714.25. And that is represented by my Y axis here on the right side of my screen, as well as my confirmation of my order. As you can see with crosshairs on, this becomes extremely accurate. And I would always suggest to have crosshairs on when trading within a chart. So those are some of the basic functionalities of when chart trade mode is activated. And I will consider chart trade mode to be the most direct and most pure form of trading directly from a chart. And I'm going to show you a couple more options. And although they aren't technically pure forms of trading directly from a chart, I think if you do use a chart within this platform, these next features would be absolutely beneficial and crucial to your success in trading with Sierra chart. So now you can always keep chart trade mode activated, which I'll do so. The next feature is also located within the trade tab. So if we head to the top left hand corner again and click on the trade tab, we'll scroll down just a bit and we'll click on the attached trade window to chart. And as you can see, this new window essentially gives us an organized place to place trades within. And the attached trading window is pretty self-explanatory as well. As I mentioned earlier, I won't be diving into every single function of this feature, but I just wanted to show the basics. We will be doing further videos in the future of each specific functionality within this feature. But for now, like I said, just the basics. So as you can see here, we have all the different options to buy at market, sell at market, buy at ask price, sell at ask price, buy at a bid price, sell at bid price. We can flatten our orders, we can reverse our orders, or we can cancel them all. Down here, we have an option for attached orders. These number here are the lot quantity, and you can simply select on them. You can also manually input them down here in the quantity section. And finally, at the top, we have the specific type of order. So currently, by default, it is at market. But if you click the drop down menu, you can see there are a ton of different types of orders we can place. And up here, we have our different tabs. We have a targets tab where you can adjust the different targets for your trading. We have sets where you can adjust the sets for your stop limit orders or your limit orders, the OCO orders. C is a more condensed version of the main page. And A is where we can adjust spread orders. It is worth mentioning that you can unattach this trade window at any time. If you go back to the trade window and simply click on the attached trade window to chart, it'll detach it for you. And then you can simply close it out from there. Or if you'd like to open up an unattached version right from the beginning, simply click on the option right above the attached trade window to chart. And you'll simply be given an unattached version of the trade window to place wherever you'd like. Now the final two functions I'll be showing you today are both re related to the dome. Now they're not separate dome charts as you can open up an entirely separate dome chart from an actual chart within this platform. But both of these versions of domes I'll be showing you directly embedded within the charts themselves. So to activate these domes that I'm speaking of, go back to the trade tab, scroll down just a bit and click on trading chart dome on. And as you can now see on the right hand side, a dome is directly embedded to within our chart. That way we can look at the current price action on the dome as well as the fluctuations within the chart. And to trade from, you can directly trade from this dome. To place a limit order, simply left click anywhere within this dome. And to place a stop order, simply right click within the dome. Once again, left click is associated with limit orders and right click is associated with stop orders. Now let me just deactivate this dome real quick before I show you the next version of the dome. To deactivate it, go back to the trade tab and hover over a trading chart dome on, click, and as you can see, it'll now be deactivated. 
The next dome is even more directly embedded into our chart. Scroll back down in the trade tab and go to draw a dome graph on chart. And as you can see, now we have a dome currently displaying the current price action. Now you can't trade directly from this dome as you could with the other one. This is more for visual appeal and being able to visualize the current price action of the chart and the fluctuations within that chart. But as I mentioned before, you can leave chart trade mode on. That way I can always right click within this and I can place the type of order I'd like. And if I left click, I have my crosshairs once again. And if we go in the top left, I can change the quantity of my order. So once again, this dome just really helps for visual purposes. Thanks for watching. If this video helped, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to give us a call or send us an email. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more informative content related to the futures market.